there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking today about road signs and the major classifications of road signs. The three ways that road signs convey information are shape, the colors, and the text or symbols that are on the road signs. These are the three ways that road signs convey information to road users. Today we're going to talk to you about the major classifications of road signs and this will introduce the road sign playlist here on Smart Drive Test. We'll be right back to talk to you about that. Smart Drivers, Rick with Smart Drive Test. Welcome back, talking to you today about the major classifications of road signs. First and foremost, and the most prominent are regulatory signs. The root word of regulatory is regulation. Regulation means law, and if it is the law, you must obey that sign. And the major regulatory signs are stop signs, yield signs, railway crossing signs, and speed signs, which are the rectangular signs with a black border, white background, and black text or symbols. These are all regulatory signs and must be obeyed, and drivers must have a knowledge of these for the purposes of a road test to be successful either on a learner's or on an on-road road test. First and foremost, stop signs are octagon, eight-sided, very prominent. They have a white border. They're red backgrounds and the letters stop written in white on them. If you're on a native reserve, they might be in the language of the native reserve on which you're on. Or if you're in Quebec, they'll be in French, arrête, which means to stop, as you can see here in the image. The next regulatory sign is the yield sign, which is an upside down triangle. It has a wide red border with a triangle, a smaller white triangle in the center. The yield sign indicates to the driver that they must give the right of way onto the road which they're entering or to any pedestrian traffic, other road users. The next regulatory sign is rectangular in shape with a black border and a white background, mostly speed signs, but slower traffic move to the right. For those of you traveling less than the traffic flow and are traveling in the hammer lane, it indicates to you, yes you, that you should move over to the right lane, which is considered the slow lane so other people can pass. The next regulatory sign is the railway crossing. In most provinces in Canada and the United States, they are beginning to standardize this. It is an X with a red border and white background, indicates a railway crossing. If you're driving a larger class vehicle, such as a bus, you may have to stop. If you're driving a truck, hauling dangerous goods, you may also have to stop before proceeding across the railway crossing. If you're taking a road test in a manual transmission, no shifting over railway tracks for the purposes of a road test. The next sign, as you can see here, is the school sign. It is a pentagon. Looks like a house with five sides. Most of these are going to neon green. They are beginning to standardize these. However, some of them can be blue or they could be green, indicating a school zone. If you're in a school zone in Canada, you have to drive 30 kilometers an hour. If you're working in the States and they have a school zone, it'll be 20 miles per hour. In British Columbia, for example, they don't have a sign indicating the end of the school zone. So when you're driving through the school zone, you have to look for the sign on the other side of the road and see the back of that sign. It's pentagon in shape and you'll be able to know that you're at the end of the school zone and that you can resume speed after that sign. Do not speed in a school zone if school is in session. That's an automatic fail on a road test. Next, most common sign, cautionary or advisory signs. They are usually diamond in shape, however, they can be rectangular. They have a yellow background and the writing on them is black or the symbols are black on the cautionary or advisory sign. One of the most common signs is the hazard obstruction sign, which is rectangular and has the hash marks on it to the left and right. And there's a full video, I'll put a card up here for you about the hazard obstruction signs that, that will warn you of hazards and obstructions on the roadway and on which side to pass or whether you can pass on either the right or the left. Next signs on a roadway, which are the most important, especially now in the summertime, construction season. Uh, usually diamond in shape, they have an orange background with black lettering or symbols on them which, which tell you of construction zones. Many of these construction zones have reduced road speeds. So take note if there is a reduced road speed, especially if you're on a road test, again, if you speed through a construction zone, automatic fail. As well, construction signs warn you of workers on the roadway and equipment, so make sure you're on the lookout for uh, roadway workers and construction 
equipment in and around construction zones. The next one is lane usage, as you can see here. Rectangular, black background, white border. The arrows on them indicate which lane you're going to be in and what that lane is going to do, whether it's going to turn left or right. Usually these lane marking signs are overhead of the lane and they are in conjunction with road marks. So the same arrow that is on the sign will also be painted on the road surface. So have a look. Sometimes the road markers are a little hard to find in the spring because they've been wearing out by snow plowing action and traffic and whatnot. Uh, services signs are rectangular blue with a white background and lettering is or symbols are white on them usually indicate hospitals or other services. Hospitals are the most prominent as you can see here in the image. Action permitted. Rectangular in shape with a green circle. Whatever action is permitted, turning to the left, turning to the right, stopping, those types of things will be with an action permitted. Some provinces use those as, a, as opposed to the inverse, which is action not permitted, as you can see here, which is the same rectangular sign with a white background, except it has a red circle with a line through it, which tells you that there's no stopping, no parking, whatever action is not permitted in the not permitted sign. You'll be tested about these signs on a learner's test, so make sure you know actions permitted and actions not permitted. The last sign category is the services sign or the destination sign, usually green with white lettering on them. will tell you how far you are from a destination. For example, if you're in Kitchener, Ontario and traveling to Toronto, it will tell you the distance from where you're at to Toronto and how far it is. So if it's 110 kilometers to Toronto from Kitchener, and you're traveling at 120 kilometers an hour, which is the speed limit on the 401, you know that it's gonna take you an hour to get there. So it can also give you an ETA, an estimated time of arrival, if you pay attention to these signs and how far you can travel in a set amount of time at a given speed. So destination signs. Services, the other sign here you can see is brown, trapezoidal in shape in some of the United States. These will give you forestry information in provincial parks and whatnot. Some of these will be written on brown signs. That's the last classification. It's not really a major classification of signs, but just to give you some indication of what this sign is about, will give you information about parks and uh, forestry and those types of things. Those are the major classifications of signs that you will need to know for the purposes of a road test. In conclusion, regulatory signs, the major classifications of signs. The root word of regulatory is regulation. It means the law, you must obey these road signs. You don't obey these road signs on a road test, you're not gonna be successful on a road test. So know your regulatory signs, stop signs, yield signs, speed signs, railway crossing signs, and school signs, all regulatory signs. The next one is lane usage signs. As you can see here, it's black, white border. The arrows on it are white as well. Advisory or cautionary signs warn you of hazards and obstructions on the roadway and anything else that you could potentially run into, uh, reduce speeds, and those types of things are all cautionary or advisory signs, usually diamond in shape, can be rectangular, yellow with black lettering or symbols on them. Construction signs, orange with black lettering or symbols. Make sure you pay attention to construction signs, most important on a road test because oftentimes these construction zones have reduced speeds and you must obey these reduced speeds. As well, in many states and many provinces, the reduced speed, if you're speeding in a construction zone, the fines are doubled. So just take, keep that in mind if you decide that you're gonna go too fast through a construction zone. Finally, destination signs green with white or uh, lettering or symbols on them. Usually it's lettering, which will tell you how far you are from a town, city, or hamlet. And you can figure out an ETA from the destination sign. Services, usually blue, rectangular in shape, telling you of hospitals and other services in the area. Forestry and parks can be brown with white lettering on them. And that's the last classification. If you like what you see here, share, subscribe, leave a comment down in the comment section. All of that helps us out. As well, Head over to my website, get your road test checklist to give information about skills that you need to practice for the purposes of a road test. Shoulder trekking, stopping from traffic, parallel parking, reverse stall parking, those types of things, what you can do on road test day that you need to do to be successful, the paperwork that you need to bring into the licensing center so that you will be able to take your road test and prove your identity doing a pre-trip on your vehicle to make sure that it is safe for the purposes of the road test because if you've got a signal out or a seat belt not working or whatnot and authorities do their pre-trip as they do on every vehicle before they go out for a road test, if something's not working, you're not gonna be able to go on your road test. So make sure you do a pre-trip before you show up at the licensing center. As well, there are some other tips and techniques that you can employ to try and reduce your own nerves and calm yourself down a little bit to make sure that you're gonna be successful on your road test.
So head over to my website, get the checklist. You can click here and that'll take you over to my website and you can sign up and get that checklist. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now. So after the, the <laughs> just leave it at that.